trying to get learn some American accent. It didn't really work out. It was too hard. <laughs> Don't know how you guys learned it, but anyway, you have to deal with my Indian accent. Um, I am Baskar. I work for Apple. I am working on Foundation DB layers for last one and a half years. Before that, I worked on Cassandra. I did uh, in kernel uh, Cassandra storage engine. It was a bad idea. Before that, uh, and they worked on also some workload improvements. Well, um, before going into document layer, I want to uh, spend a little bit time on foundation DB layers concept. Well, Ben already explained it. I just want to, I'll, I'll speed it up. So if you look at a typical database stack, it looks something like this. It has three components, core engine, a transactions module, and storage engine. This is a very theoretical conceptual view. Usually, uh, the lines are blurry. They have overlap quite a bit. Uh, the query engine is the one that decides the data model for any database, whether it is a document data model, document or SQL database, query engine is the one. A transaction submodule and the storage engine, uh, these are usually independent of uh, the data model. Um, well, I guess uh, I skipped it, but query engine is the one which uh, implements query planning and all, and transaction module guarantees the acid um, properties, and store engine is the one which guarantees replication, uh, durability guarantees. So the problems that we usually solve in bottom two layers are independent of the data model. They are usually the same whichever database you deal with. It usually depends on what kind of transactional guarantees it, the database is providing, not much on the what kind of dat, uh, data model it supports. So FoundationDB tries to solve the bottom two-thirds of the stack at scale. FoundationDB has uh, serializable transactions, and it has very strong isolation guarantees. It supports, uh, well, it has all the usual database stuff. It has like uh, synchronous backups, multi agent support. We talked about what FoundationDB is good at so far. Let's look at the API. The API for FoundationDB is very minimalistic. It has a rocky value store API. Unlike the traditional, unlike the SQL or document databases, it doesn't have joins or aggregations or secondary indices. If, but the API is strong and minimalistic enough. The idea is you, you can use this as a basic building block and you can build interesting and complex data models on top. This is where the promise of uh, layers comes into picture. Layer stays on top of foundation DB and uh, it builds the data models on top of, on top of the FoundationDB API. Because FoundationDB solves all the, most of the database problems, layers can just worry about data model and only, the, only that particular problem, not much of uh, everything else solved by FoundationDB. And uh, the, as the persistent state is stored on the FoundationDB, uh, layers are usually stateless. And layers can be either built as libraries or you can build them as stateless microservices. As long as you use the transactions, as long as the layers use transactions properly, uh, concurrency is taken care of, uh, taken care of by Foundation DB. So, beca uh, because of that, if you want to have a more throughput, you can just run more instances without worrying about concurrency or scale, so it's quite easy to scale as well. Well, uh, this goes without saying, uh, obviously layers uh, inherit all the foundation features. It, you get the multi support, you have the replication, everything just ha happens seamlessly. Well, we already know uh, the, there are some utility layers. They are so critical, we are, uh, they are actually shipped with foundation DB language bindings. Di directory layer, which is uh, which provides us key space abstraction on top of foundation DB API, and tuple layer gives us uh, sorted order um, data data type encoding. And of course, uh, there are a couple of layers from the community. There is a Linux NBD block layer and a Genus graph layer. I think we have talk after this. In the same spirit, we have document layer. Document layer, we think this is the first step. Uh, uh, this is the first step from us uh, towards the promise of Foundation DB. Future, in future, we'll see uh, more and more layers from community and hopefully from us as well. Well, 
good. Mm. Well, document layer, it implements document database API on top of Foundation DB. It's not just any document database API, it is MongoDB wire compatible. Because it is wire compatible, you can just use any standard MongoDB drivers or framework to connect to document layer. There is no, uh, you don't have to, uh, um, for all that matters, for the application, it looks like a MongoDB server. It does a lot of things better, that's a different point, but it is. it looks like a MongoDB server. Uh, well, uh, Whatever you can say about MongoDB, people really love the AP MongoDB API. It is very easy to use. It is very quick to uh, onboard. Um, the, the query language is very rich. There are lots of different features on top, the, um, then, uh, and also lots of frameworks out there. So uh, co combining that with the strengths of Foundation DB, we really think uh, this is a very good way to uh, very good and easy way to on, uh, get onto Foundation DB. Well, the API, there are no surprises here. You all know MongoDB, is, it is a MongoDB API. Uh, it stores JSON documents and it is schema-less. Um, I'm not gonna spend much, uh, any time on API because there is huge documentation out there. There are lots of uh, tutorials and videos on MongoDB API. Let's look at the feature set. Document layer, uh, it is not a drop-in replacement for MongoDB for most of the, for, like for every application out there. We started as a, the core set of uh, document layer features. It did, uh, document layer supports CRUD operations, large set of uh, query or update operators. It supports secondary indices and transactions. These transactions are foundation DB transactions. Uh, exposed through document layer API. You see that the, uh, here you might not find the uh, popular features like chain streams or aggregations of MongoDB uh, aggregations. I guess these are two big ones. Um, and also we, pro we might not have all the second, all like for test indexes and stuff like that. Um, the, we are, this is the project, this is just starting up. We are working on it. It's gonna happen very soon. What makes document layer very special? Well, we keep hearing since morning, anything to do with foundation to be starts with strong consistency guarantees. And document layer just inherits that. The consistency, it has very strong consistency guarantees and it happens seamlessly. You don't, application doesn't have to specify uh, what kind of read concern, what kind, what kind of read preference, what kind of write concern, what kind of consistency level they have to access. They don't have to carefully manufacture all that. It is always consistent. It is given out of the box. And there are no locks. It is optimistic concurrency control. And also, uh, there are no database locks and all. It is completely lock free. The scaling. Um, Foundation DB, well, it is a distributed database. It is not just, a it is distributed at the same time. It does, uh, the sharding and everything is dynamic. There are no static short keys. It's, again, it is better, at the same time, simpler for application. Application, anybody using static sharding, database like Mongo or Cassandra, um, people, applications usually, it's quite often that you use a short key and after six months or one year, once your data grows quite a lot, you realize, hey, my short key is wrong. Now I have to change my short key and guess what? I have to remigrate all my data or rewrite all my data again. There is no short key, so you don't have to worry about how to distribute your data. Database foundation DB takes care of it. Well, I said so much about document layer is this good and that good. I have to back up all those claims. I think the best way to back up these claims is uh, going a little bit into, into the design. I want to talk a little bit about how the query execution model works, and also how we, uh, how the storage model works. These two things at high level explain all the claims. So, in the uh, with with the single node SQL database like MySQL or Postgres, we are used to the norm that everything is a transaction. 
transactions are not some slow features which you have to use very carefully only when there is no other way around. Everything is a transaction with, uh, like, with something like Postgres or most MySQL. Even when you run a statement in Postgres uh, without starting a transaction, Postgres automatically starts a transaction, runs the statement, commits immediately after. So that's, that statement runs as a separate transaction. Uh, so document layer works more uh, in the same um, in the same spirit. Everything is a transaction because foundation DB everything is a transaction. So either application can explicitly go and say, I want to start a transaction, I want to run all these statements and commit this, which groups all these statements. Or uh, just like old MongoDB applications, you can just keep running, uh, uh, keep issuing the requests separately, and each request starts a separate foundation DB transaction, and we call them implicit transactions. So let's see how they actually look like. Well, the green kind, uh, green dot represents the MongoDB request. Uh, let's say document layer receives a requ uh, one single request. This is out of transaction context, a single request. And document layer says this request, it has to find, uh, based on the model, it has, to, uh, it, uh, it has to do some operations on foundation DB. If you take an example of, let's say, a simple MongoDB, rec MongoDB insert, that might need to read the metadata, on Mongo uh, metadata from foundation DB, and it might have to do a, a find out if there is a duplicate document, it might have to uh, insert the document and also uh, update the secondary indices for the particular collection. All these operations will go as separate foundation DB operations, but all of them happen under a single transaction. That gives serializable trans that gives a serializable consistency for the whole for the request. And well, uh, yeah. Um, and obviously, if there are any conflicts, document layer takes care of retrying and all. So this is how the transactions work. But there is a catch. Foundation DB transactions are uh, short, or uh, they have a limit of five, five seconds. Five seconds, they have a five second limitation. Um, obviously, we can't really uh, fit everything. Uh, you can you can imagine MongoDB. Uh, you can imagine a MongoDB request which touches all documents in a collection. I could be running a request to give ten percent bonus to all my employees. Uh, that has to touch each and every document, and that may not, depending on how big my company is, it might not fit in a single transaction. Um, in, uh, it, it might not finish in five seconds, so it might not fit in one transaction. So obviously, uh, document layer does the obvious thing, which is it splits into multiple transactions. So the guarantees here are not as strong as short-lived transactions, well, short-lived requests. Uh, but it, is, uh, it still guarantees uh, consistency at individual document level. This is, I think, uh, even for the, the longer consistency for long running requests may not be as good as for the short running ones. I think it is still better than the competition. Then explicit transactions. Application can go out and say, hey, I want to start a transaction, do this uh, request. This is actually best way to get even better performance than implicit transactions. Because whether you want it or not, document layer starts the transaction anyway. So if, if it's going, if, it's, if that's going to happen anyway, then why, why don't you like amortize the cost by running multiple requests under one transaction? So this is, even though the data model is document data model, lots of the design principles here really remind world SQL days. Well, not world, but uh, the SQL days. For SQL times. Uh, but when you're running explicit transactions, the same principles apply when you run a, um, when you write an application on top of foundation DB. It is optimistic concurrency control, so you have to worry about conflicts and you have to worry about retries. Um, the transaction, the explicit transaction, the transactions we have right now are not yet compatible with V4 MongoDB transactions. Uh, this is something uh, we are actively working on. This is going to change very soon. Uh, the implementation we have right now is kind of tied to client connection. This is again to do with not being compatible with a MongoDB transaction. This is probably the only feature which is not 
compatible with the existing MongoDB, MongoDB features. Then storage model. Well, uh, foundation DB is storing, so we don't have to worry about the we don't have to worry about persistence or replication stuff like that. But we have to worry about how do we map document onto the FTP keys. That is quite important. That actually, uh, well, that is quite important. Let's say uh, if you take a sample JSON document in MongoDB underscore id if you, um, underscore id is the primary key. Uh, we have a sample employee document. Let's see how we store this. We uh, document layer stores a single document across multiple FDB keys. This allows document layer to have support larger documents because uh, each FDB key can't hold more than or the value can't hold more than 100k bytes of data. By spreading it across multiple keys, you can have we can support larger documents. Number one, number two. You don't, uh, if you want to update just one field in the document, you don't have to reread the entire document and write again. Um, wait a second. I think I didn't cover everything here. The, the way key is formatted is quite important. So key is, you can, um, key, uh, key has a prefix of the collection name. Well, it usually is the directory prefix, but that's not important. It has the, um, the collection name so that you can group all of your collection data under one key space. And then key includes the primary key so that you can group all of your uh, keys for the document together. At the same time, all the documents are, um, at the same time, all the documents are ordered by the primary key. So you can see here, we have multiple employee documents here all of them are um, ordered by the primary key. Primary key here, like ID is the primary key. If I want to read, uh, you can think that that's, the Mon that's a MongoDB command. Uh, if I want to read all employees in the collection, that, that boils down to doing a get range on employee prefix. This is like, um, well, get range is foundation DB command, right? Yeah. So the same way, if I want to re if I want to access a employee document based on the ID, because ID is uh, the primary ID is the primary key that is part of the uh, FTP key, I can just uh, prepare the prefix using the primary key and prefix, which becomes employee two. It accesses the employee record of Bob. This is good as long as uh, you only care about predicates that include primary key. But if you have predicates that include something like I want to access all employees with name Eric. We have to have secondary indices, and we do have secondary indices. Secondary indices have to maintain mapping from index key to primary key. Index key here is name, primary key is ID. So this is how it looks like. Well, it has the index prefix, and after that, the index key, which stores the name, and then primary key. The primary key uh, can be stored in the value but if you, uh, you don't want to, because unlike primary index, secondary, uh, unlike primary key, secondary keys are not unique. You can have multiple, well, here we have multiple Eric's. If you, do, if you, keep, if you don't keep the primary key part of the, uh, part of the key, then manager Eric, I guess, yeah, he's gonna override the developer, which is not great. Then the value, we don't really have to, we don't really store anything. If there is a query, something like, give me all documents with name Eric, it first goes to the index space, ask, uh, does a get range on Eric, it gets all the primary documents, goes back to the primary space, and reads all the documents. We could avoid doing this uh, two phase, or like uh, two sets of gets. If uh, we store the, we, can, we could store the document or the, uh, fields of the document we care about as value. Well, they are covered indexes. We don't support them yet, but that's something that we can do. So what is this kind, what is this kind of storage model giving us? As part of what we call primary key, secondary key, and all, when it goes down to foundation DB, they are all just normal keys. They are all treated the same way, the primary indexes and secondary indexes. They are shorted the same way. 
this is a big difference from lots of uh, from other NoSQL databases, where secondary indexes shorting is very closely tied with the primary index. So uh, if you have to do a query on secondary index, it usually has to go to each and every shard. Uh, you will be familiar if you like see Cassandra or MongoDB with this, how they usually do. The, any query on secondary index usually has to touch each and every shard. That's not the case here because secondary sharding is same as the primary index sharding. Uh, and also, you, we are getting all these features without uh, setting up any short case. Then the indices. As I explained before, index updates always happen together with the actual document update. So indices always, always uh, stay constant with the pri uh, primary index or the document, period. There, is no, there are no exceptions. And indices are distributed as well, that's good. Uh, index rebuild, this is some place where we are focusing on at the moment. We, uh, Mong uh, MongoDB customers know how painful index rebuilds can be. I didn't believe until I, uh, I didn't even think that's possible to do. A index rebuild, from a, if your application wants to do index rebuild, they actually have to go to the operations team and ask them carefully bounce replicas one by one so, then I, so that they can actually rebuild indexes on each and every replica separately. Well, that's not the case here. Um, there are lots of other improvements we are doing, but I guess I'm running out of time. Uh, well, building layers on top of Foundation DB. Uh, can be quite easy because of all the guarantees Foundation DB is giving. But at the same time, there are lots of challenges. Uh, it is optimistic concurrency control, so you have to worry about avoiding contentions. Uh, Alec from our team is giving a talk this afternoon. I strongly suggest going for that. This is a very interesting one. And caching, because we want to run multiple instances of document layer, any uh, data we are caching is going to work against us because you have to now worry about concurrency. Uh, because it's not part of the foundation to be transactional guarantees. And uh, any code you're writing on top of foundation DB has to be added button because of unknown uh, commit failures. The last one, this is very deceiving. I put it in like one line, query planning optimization. People spend decades making, uh, making these things better. Uh, well, we have a basic model that works, that kind of works. Uh, we are working on making it better and better. Future improvements. These are the things coming very uh, very soon. Uh, we want to make our transactions compatible so that, so that they actually work in all kinds of deployments. And mutual TLS, Shin from our team is working on it. Uh, it he's going to probably commit a PR like this week. Um, index rebuild improvements, quite a few of them are coming. Our metadata, metadata design could uh, be improved quite a bit. And features. Aggregations, change streams, a lot of people ask me about change streams. I understand uh, that is a very desired feature. Um, that is something uh, we want to work on like beginning of next year. And uh, spatial indexes, test indexes. Spatial indexes probably very soon. Community, now document layer is open source. I should have put some link here, but you, you have Google, you can Google it. Uh, it is open source. Uh, Apache V2 license is not any, there are no restrictions. It's not, you can run a service if you want to. I'm not pointing fingers, but you can run a service if you want to. Uh, and give it a shot. Please give feedback on forums. If you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, definitely let us know because we can improve on it. And raise issues if you have some features that you really want to see soon. And welcome PRs. We are really excited about this project. We think uh, we, can, uh, we can really build community around this. Uh, this is the best project. And also, this one is uh, written in Flow C++. Flow is a very fun language to work on. Trust me, I did Java until two years back. And when I say Flow is good, it's good. Uh, that's all from me.